Hey everybody, Mark Dawes here, and in this video I want to talk about handcuffs, specifically rigid cuffs, and whether or not rigid cuffs can be classified as an offensive weapon, because that seems to be the opinion of a former police officer. And what I'd like to do now is to read you the email that I've been asked to comment on, I'll then read you my reply, but then, and this is a really good bit, I'll show you some interesting stuff, some correspondence that I had way back in 1999 with Scotland Yard on this issue, and that will clarify the whole thing absolutely 100% for you. So here's the email that I received that I've been asked to comment on. It says, I have a legal query regarding the security personnel at last weekend's meeting. I am a retired police officer and attended the finals meeting with a number of serving officers who all came to the same conclusion. I saw at least one of security staff wearing a tactical vest equipped with rigid handcuffs. Rigid handcuffs are an offensive weapon capable of inflicting serious injury if misused. No different to a baton, and unless the carrier is a sworn officer of the Crown, trained in their use and retrained every year, they cannot be lawfully carried in a public place. The uh, place, I'll, I'll admit the name of the place, although private property is open to the public by payment or otherwise, and is therefore a public place according to law. If the handcuffs were used to restrain a person and God forbid, cause injury that would likely to be viewed as an assault with a weapon and as such leave security staff and jointly the employers, uh, the name of the company, I'll admit, open to serious litigation. This in no way should be seen as a criticism of the security personnel who I saw to be nothing but excellent all weekend. Right, well, my response to that is as follows. I put, said hi and I'll admit their names. Thank you for email. Handcuffs are not classified as offensive weapons per se, and I have a whole YouTube playlist on handcuffs which you can see here, and there's the link if you want to go look at it yourselves. Rigid cuffs are not offensive weapons unless the training that accompanies them is teaching staff to apply them and then use pain to achieve compliance. Any law-abiding citizen can carry and use handcuffs, but if it is in a work capacity, then, like any other piece of work equipment, they must be justified by a suitable and sufficient assessment of risk, be accompanied by policy, procedure and training and be stored and maintained in line with the appropriate regulations. Therefore, the carriage and use of handcuffs stroke rigid cuffs is not a right purely given to police officers. It is a right given to every citizen. The use of handcuffs, including rigid cuffs, is governed by common and statute law as a use of force option, so the use must be considered reasonable in the circumstances. The issue raised by this particular person about rigid cuffs being offensive weapons is interestingly one that I actually tried to argue many years ago too with the police. My argument, just like this person's, the former police officer, was that if a piece of equipment has either been specifically manufactured and designed to cause pain and harm, or is being used to cause pain and harm by its trained application, then this in effect would surely make it an offensive weapon. Interestingly, the police didn't agree with me. In their opinion, a rigid cuff is not an offensive weapon, so maybe it is worth you and or this particular person, a former police officer, gaining legal clarification from the police's legal department, as we did. I personally don't think there is a need to carry rigid cuffs, because if they are not being used in the way previously described, then the need to carry those specific types of handcuffs makes, them, makes the need for them redundant at source. As a handcuff is defined as a temporary restraining device, the person being handcuffed should already be controlled and restrained, and then the cuff should be applied. This again, in my opinion, makes the need to carry rigid cuffs redundant. However, this is my opinion only, and you may wish to seek the advice of a lawyer on this matter for legal clarification. So that's the email that I was asked to, to respond to, and you've just seen my response. Now, I want to show you some uh, communication I had with the police. It was with Scotland Yard, and particularly the public order section, way back in 1999. I think you'll find this really interesting, so bear with me. So what you're looking at now is a synopsis document, and it says here that I corresponded with the following parties between June to September 1999. That was the public order section of the Home Office, the chair of the Association of Chief Police Officers, ACPO, Officer Safety and Restraint Committee, and the Health and Safety Executive, and Professor Andrew Ashworth, who is head of the law faculty, Oxford University, and author of The Principles of Criminal Law, second edition. I also gained information from two independent police services litigation departments. What I was attempting to find out is what rights non-police personnel have for the carrying and use of A, handcuffs, non-rigid chain link type, and quick cuffs, rigid link. The basis of my letter was to ascertain the legal requirements for the carrying and use of handcuffs. The content of my letter was as follows. 
Please excuse my writing to you out of the blue like this, but I hope that you may be able to assist me in gaining some answers and clarification re the above. What I'm attempting to find out is what rights non-police personnel have for the carrying and use of A handcuffs, brackets, non-rigid chain like type, chain link type, close brackets, and B, quick cuffs, rigid linked. For example, would it be considered reasonable uh, would it be considered a reasonable excuse for an employed person, non-police, i.e. someone such as a retail store guard detective to be issued with handcuffs to assist them in arresting and subsequently detaining a shop thief who is attempting to cause a violent breach of the peace? Provided, of course, they have been given they have been competently trained in the lawful application of the device. The information that I have been given so far is that non-rigid handcuffs may be carried by any law-abiding citizen and are classified as temporary restraining devices and quick cuffs are only issued to police personnel as they are defined as controlling devices as opposed to merely temporary restraining devices. Obviously, there are employed non-police personnel being trained in the use of the non-rigid cuffs, i.e. airline cabin crew, and as many employed people are in positions where they may have to deal with a situation such as a shop thief or violent patient or passenger. Therefore, what I need to know is the health and safety position on the use of such equipment and how its use is authorised and controlled. In short, what health and safety statute stroke guidance exists, what defines you may carry and use such items, under what circumstances and under what authority. Now I got some responses and this is way back in 99 and the health and safety executive said, handcuffs may be considered as work equipment and subject to the provision of use equipment regulations. And that means that provided individuals comply with the above regulations, i.e. the equipment is correctly maintained and staff are competently and lawfully trained in its correct use, any organisation may use such equipment to its, uh, issue such equipment to its staff for the purpose for which they are manufactured and intended. However, the HSC could not comment on the authorisation and control of such equipment, so they recommended that I speak with the police at Scotland Yard. So I contacted Scotland Yard and um, I sent a few letters and emails in, and faxes actually, back in the day, and I was contacted by telephone by an inspector, Neil Haynes, who had been given my contact details by the health and safety executive. Now, Inspector Haynes was responding to the questions that the HSC could not answer, namely authorisation and control. He was also responding on behalf of the Chair of the Association of Chief Police Officers, Officer Safety and Restraint Committee. Now, a summary of our conversation was that handcuffs, including rigid cuffs, are not, in the opinion of Inspector Haynes and the Metropolitan Police, offensive weapons per se, as they are specifically designed and manufactured for the purpose of restraint and not to cause injury or harm. They also said this, which was quite brilliant. They said the availability of handcuffs in places such as adult sex shops and army surplus stores would seem to support this opinion. <laughs> they, and that's the police. That's the, the you know, the, the Arrest and Restraint Committee from the Association of Chief Police Officers. They do go on to say, however, if the equipment was being carried not for its design purpose or used its use adapted via training perhaps to cause injury, then the application would be unlawful and if the item was being used as a striking or attacking implement, it would fall into the category of an offensive weapon by its use and the intent of the person using it. But I have to say, any item would fall into a, that, that term, category of an offensive weapon if it was not being used, you know, even, uh, reasonably in the circumstances, the hairbrush included. In any case, where handcuffs are used, the action of handcuffing would only be seen as justifiable when there is a reasonable apprehension that the prisoner would otherwise escape or turn violent. If handcuffs are applied unnecessarily, it will constitute a trespass against the person, even if the arrest itself is lawful. So it goes on. Uh, I did ask Inspector Haynes if he could provide me a written synopsis of what he had told me, um, which I was recording to actually produce the document from. Um, he actually did say that he would need to go back to the Police Legal Services Department to actually get to, to get um, clarification on some of the things he told me. Uh, he never came back, he never signed it, but that is a true synopsis of that conversation. I also spoke to Andrew Ashworth, who is a professor of law at Oxford University. He was courteous enough to contact me by telephone, but he stated he couldn't comment on my letter as he simply did not know the answer. The reply from the Home Office Public Order section, they referred my inquiry to the response from Inspector Neil Haynes of the Metropolitan Police, so they were agreeing with what he said. And the opinion of a legal services unit, and this is the police, and I actually wrote to every um, police service area unit in the country at the time, uh, and my good friend, now now departed, Pete Boatman, who was an inspector at Northamptonshire Police, he helped me actually do this. We wrote to, I think it was 48 or 53 police service areas to the legal services department. And uh, they came back with this. This is a synopsis from one. 
They said uh, no handcuffs, including rigid cuffs, are regarded as offensive weapons per se. Uh, and their written response states, I can find nothing in the legislation which prohibits or prevents the use of, of particularly chain link handcuffs where they are used as a temporary restraining devices by those persons who will be doing what is colloquially known as making a citizen's arrest. I believe there is legal authority supporting this view by virtue of Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act 1967. Now, you know, I could go on, but you get the drift. Now, the thing about this is, um, I know a lot of police officers will say that, in their opinion, the carriage of rigid handcuffs by, by staff you know, constitutes an offensive weapon. It doesn't. There is no law that says that a rigid handcuff is an offensive weapon. You've seen the response from the uh, Arrest and Restraint Committee of the Association of Chief Police Officers. Neil Haynes was their expert at the time, and he was responding on behalf of the Arrest and Restraint Committee from ACPO. The Home Office Committee referred their answer to Neil Haynes. The Health and Safety Executive said that if they're needed for work, then they fall in the category of provision of use of work equipment. So there is no law that makes a rigid handcuff an offensive weapon. However, if you are using it offensively, not for its intended purpose, and in the old days I know, and the police used to train like this because I trained with them, you would put the ratchet on and drag the person to the ground and that would cause pain and injury. Now that movement may, in certain circumstances, be unreasonable and therefore you constitute an assault which makes the use of the handcuff offensive by its application because it's not being used for its intended purpose. But if you have someone restrained and controlled and then the handcuffs are applied, whether they're rigid, chain link or hinged, those items are not offensive weapons. They can actually be carried by any member of the public. There is no law that prohibits it. You do not have to be an officer of the Crown and have some sort of special permission granted by the Queen to carry these things. You just have to have the, the, you know, the normal right of every citizen to do so under common law and statute law but you are responsible for their application. You, know, you have to make sure that you use them and that that use is reasonable in the circumstances. And in a work environment, obviously all the health and safety legislation applies. So if the employer wants staff to have handcuffs and to use them in a work capacity, then they must be trained to a competent standard. There must be policy, there must be provision, there must be risk assessment, and the handcuffs must fall under the provision of use of work equipment, and they must be maintained and stored and everything else that goes along with it. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that clarifies a few things for quite a lot of you. It's pretty obvious there's still some confusion out there as to whether or not handcuffs are offensive weapons or not. And I'm not having a pop at the police. They've got a difficult enough job to do. You know, that person there has made an, an assumption based upon his past. Um, but again, that just goes to prove that assumptions sometimes without proper clarification are wrong. And one thing I would say, you know, not just to, to that, that particular police officer, because I'm pretty sure his intention was, was, was genuine, is that if advice has been given to staff that prevents them from using equipment, which if that equipment was used, could have prevented a greater assault from occurring or indeed have saved a life, then there is a line of causation back to the person that gave that incorrect advice. And uh, yeah, I've got other videos out about this from an insurance point of view and everything else. But if you did that from an insurance point of view, your insurance would be null and void. So if you gave incorrect, you know, legally incorrect advice, and someone got injured and they came to sue you and you relied on your professional indemnity insurance to, to cover the legal costs, you may find that your insurance will be null and void because you gave incorrect information. And under Article 13 of the European Convention on Human Rights, if you are given incorrect illegal advice and you are disadvantaged by that, then you have an enforceable right to compensation. You can sue uh, on that basis and there's case law on that too. But maybe that'll form the base of other videos. But hey, hope that helps. I uh, hope that clarifies a few things for, for quite a lot of you. If you like what you heard, you know, share it about. And if you're interested in the handcuffing trainers course, then come and see us because, you know, without sounding arrogant, we've done a lot of research into this and I'm pretty sure that we know what we're talking about because we've gone to the right people to ask the right questions to get the right information. Thanks ever so much, guys. Uh, like, share the video and leave a comment. Uh, speak to you all soon. Take care.